Good morning. Good morning. We want to welcome you on our Mission and Service Sunday. Uh, we're excited to have our guest, Daniel Harrison, come and speak to us about the ministries of Open Arms Mission and our support of them. Um, I, I can't let the morning go by without uh, uh, saying a shout out to Brother Robbie in the back with his, uh, with his Leafs jersey on. I came very close to wearing mine. And uh, as you see, the choir is in Leafs colors. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some Habs fans in there. But, but uh, yeah, it was good to see them win and kind of break their curse last night. Um, a, few, a few announcements this morning. Um, the books are in for the study that begins on Wednesday. Um, Unclobber. If you've spoke, if you've spoken to me about grabbing a book, I have them following the service. They're twenty-four dollars. Uh, if you don't have the cash on you today, I know where most of you live, so yeah, I trust you for it. Um, and let me know if you're coming to the two thirty or the uh, six thirty study. Okay, I got you. Some of you have already noted that, but a few of you haven't. Also. Um, I got a great response last week of those who are interested in becoming members. Um, perhaps you've been hanging around here for a while and have not taken that step of membership. Um, if you are interested, please see me. In the United Church, we become members three different ways. One through transfer. If you are a member at a, another United Church, it's a simple letter of transfer. Uh, profession of faith, which is a faith statement, kind of like our creed. Who, uh, that we profess in front of the congregation or uh, through baptism and um, confirmation. So those are the three different ways. If you're interested, please see me following the service. And then finally, um, it's good to highlight some of the ministries that aren't as upfront uh, that happen during the week that you don't always see. And one of them is our Quilts of Care. Our Sew Together group is um, just amazing at... Uh, uh, jumping to the needs of someone who's going through a difficult time, whether it be, be their own health, um, the loss of a loved one, or whatever, um, whatever they're going through. And I know from a personal experience, my mother-in-law has, has got great comfort, and my father-in-law, as he was dying of cancer, got great comfort um, through these beautiful quilts that the ladies made. Um, we have uh, one of our own uh, gentlemen, um, Hans uh, Gotch had a over a 60 moment there for a second. And um, they have made him a beautiful quilt. And we want to bless it this morning. As Irene's going to take it to, I'm not going to open the whole thing because my shoulder won't help me manage it. it. <laughs> but just so you get an idea of how they, you got it? And the, the back is so soft, and there's no charge. There's no... There's no, there's no expectation of return, but it's, uh, like I say, it brings, it, they really are comforting, these quilts. So, let's bless it and Joni. Let's pray together. Oh, God, thank you for the the talent and the work that goes into these beautiful quilts that bring comfort to so many people, those who attend our church, but those throughout the community and family members and all over, all over the world, really. We pray, oh God, that you would um, bless this quilt, that it might be uh, a source of comfort for Hans as he deals with his health issues, that uh, he would find warmth, and it would be a reminder that uh, we love him and we are praying for him. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Joni. I believe, yes, Mike. Go ahead, come on up, Mike. I just want to say thank you to the ladies on behalf of my dad. He'll be touched. Uh, like many of us, as we get older also, it's day by day dealing with some of the things we have to deal with, but I know this one mean a lot to him. Thank you. Thank you. 
I believe those are all the, um, all the announcements we have this morning. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Um, the fall, this Wednesday, as well as our first, uh, our first time together um, with, our, with our study, our book study, the choir will also be at um, the music festival in Port Colborne. They'll be performing at 7 o'clock at, is it in here? Oh, it's at Central United, <laughs> but not this one, the one down the road in Port Colborne on, I believe it's Elgin? Delhi. Delhi. I can get there. I can never remember the name of the street. Um, at 7 o'clock, they'll be performing, and um, it's a great time to showcase our choir. They, uh, <laughs> our choir's got a bit of an ego, you know that? Whenever, when, whenever, we, <laughs> whenever we do something with another choir, the, the refrain afterwards is also, well, we won, you know. It's like it's not a competition. It's really a competition, but this is a competition. So feel free to go out and, uh, and support the choir for this. It's great, and hear some beautiful music. I believe those are all the announcements, finally. And um, as we have been doing, um, we are going to pray for peace in Ukraine. I'm going to light the candles that are the colors of the Ukrainian flag. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for those who are peacemakers and peacekeepers in this world of conflict. We think of our Canadian forces and, and even those who are taking people out of Sudan as we speak. This family who has just arrived from, uh, from Ukraine, that this community, the Niagara community has so generously provided all of their needs for their apartment as they get settled, as they adjust to a new culture, to a new way of doing things, and miss and worry about their homeland. Oh God, we pray for those who cannot or choose not to leave Ukraine, that you would protect them, that you would give them courage, that you would give them strength during these per perilous times. We pray for peace and that hearts and minds would be changed so that the Prince of Peace may reign and people can get back to thriving and living their lives, serving one another and loving you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One other quick announcement. The members of the Community Service Committee are leading the service today, so I've got kind of the day off sort of thing. So I'm looking forward to that. So Joni. Please read with me the call to worship. Rise to blessing. Rise to gratitude. Rise to potential. Rise to Rise to generosity. Rise to appreciation. Rise to hopefulness. Rise to delight. Rise like Jesus did for God has blessed you with a day too beautiful to miss. Amen. Please stand and join the choir for hymn number 593, Jesu, Jesu.
Well, this is my first time up here for a long time. <laughs> I'm going to call an opening prayer. O oh, creator and sustainer of life, as the sun rises and a new day unfolds, with all of its promise and hope, we commit ourselves to join the DRIVE mission, to advocate for justice, to exercise compassion, to love with reserve, to work towards peace, to extend, to afford second chance, to offer our generosity best to the witness blessing, to seize opportunities for gratitude, to change and be changed, to regard ourselves with grace, to embody Jesus in his spirit, I live, move, and have our being. And was in compassion. Stay forever, ever, days, amen. See, you give me a few days off, go to a conference, and I'm, I'm totally disorganized. Um, have you noticed something a little different this morning? Well, the window, but something else. The piano. <laughs> next, because it's Mission and Service Sunday, we're going to, next week we're going to rededicate the piano. But in the meantime, I would like to thank Sue Morris and her, her group, um, to, that restored the piano. Um, some of the work was done by Sue and Gary, a lot, the majority of it, and then for the unique things like the painting and all that, they enlisted some local talent. And it is so good. When, I, when, it, when you were doing your prelude, I thought something sounds different, and then I realized, because I didn't know what Sunday we were going to be able to play it again. Surprise! <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> So let's, um, even though we'll dedicate next week, let's give Sue a hand and just thank God for the restoration of him.
was amazing. Well done. And didn't it, the piano just sound, we missed it, definitely. So we'd like to welcome Daniel to come up and do the children's time. So if the kids that are here would come up to the front. Right, wherever. Then it's them. Oh, it's on. <laughs> it's never you? Okay. Well. Well, good morning. How are you guys doing? Good? You have to clean your rooms later? Can I tell you a secret? I got to clean my room later, too. I bet you your room is probably cleaner than mine right now. Yeah? I think so. Your, your room's only a little bit messy? Oh, you have bunk beds. Wow. Wow, I'm kind of jealous. I've always wanted bunk beds, but I wasn't allowed. So I got it. I, uh, Reverend Martha asked me to come and do t uh, uh, kids' time this week, and I was like, yeah, I'd love to do that. But I didn't know what to do. So. I decide to write a story. So I would like to tell you my story. Is that all right? But I'm really bad at drawing, so I need you to close your eyes and imagine the pictures for me, okay? Can you do that for me? Can you help me out? Because I, I couldn't draw the pictures well enough. Can you do that for me? Okay, so let's close our eyes and imagine the story together, okay? Okay, so I'm going to read you the story. Once upon a time, in a small little city, there was a kind and caring girl named Sophia. What was her name? Do you guys remember her name? You do? Okay, so imagine her. Oh, that's a good name. Okay, so Maria. She was known throughout her whole town as a kind and generous person. One day, Sophia heard about a family at her school that, was n that didn't have enough food uh, to make sure that Sophia's friend had lunch. Th they had no food to eat and they were having a, a terrible time. Sophia knew that she had to do something to help. Uh, a princess, Chad. Mm. Oh, so, so if you hear about somebody who needs help there, you're gonna imagine you're being Sophia, okay? <laughs> Sophia went with her mom to the local Zares, because that's the only grocery store I can think of, and bought some food and other surprise supplies. She went to her friend's house and knocked on the door. What sound does a door make? Make it, make the noise. Oh, louder, there's people in the back, they can't hear it. Oh, that's a big knock, that's a good knock. Did you hurt your hand, are you okay? <laughs> You're good, okay. <laughs> um, and knocked on the door, and when her friend's mom answered, Sophia greeted them and told her, told them that she had bought some toys. Ooh, nice shoes. Ooh, bought some food and other supplies. Ooh, I, and to get them through their difficult time. Her friend's family was so happy that they smiled from ear to ear. Can you big, give me a big smile? Get a big smile, as big as you can go. And they thanked Sophia for her kindness. Okay, bye. <laughs> Sophia felt happy knowing that she could make a difference. Word of Sophia's kindness spread quickly throughout the small little town. Well, it was really a city. And soon other families began to seek M Sophia and her mom out. And Sophia made sure that she did everything to try to help. Sometimes she would raise money by cleaning cars. Well, her mom's car, that is. And doing some dishes so she could get some extra money so she could help other people. 
Over time, Maria's or Sophia's acts of kindness inspired others in the town to help others in need as well. Soon the entire town had come together to help one another and the community became stronger and had a bigger heart for it. Can you show me where your heart is? Right here? Do you have a big heart or a little heart? A big heart? You have a little heart? I think you've got a big heart. You know? You've got a big heart? Do you, does your heart smile? No? What do you mean? I want a smiling heart. Um, Sophia's actions showed them that even the smallest act of kindness can make a big difference. By helping others in need, we can create a world that is more caring, happy, and kind. The end. Was that a good story or a bad story? Oh, thanks. Because if you said bad, I didn't know what I was going to say. <laughs> so I just wanted to say thank you for coming up and hanging out with me. And I hope you have a good time today. Okay? See you guys later. Bye. I think even the adults will say it was a good story. It really helps when your audience helps. So I have the prayers of the people. Our creator and God conspire with us to create a world where all have access to nutritious and sustainable food sources and none live with scarcity or food insecurity. Redeemer, save us from oppressive and unjust systems. Mobilize us to be a part of a world response that works in partnership with those of good will to foster equitable resource sharing. Sustainer, cultivate our resilience and expand our imaginations so that we might continually find new ways to answer the call to end hunger until all may flourish. Amen. And on the screen is the prayer list, so please keep them in your prayers for the week. And if you know of someone that you would like added to the prayer list, please call the office and just say a prayer every day. I know it really helps. There we go. I didn't have my glasses on. Um, please join the choir as they do hymn number 79, Spirit Open My Heart.
As we have already received our offering, may we bow our heads in prayer. Giving God, we receive so much from you and therefore have much to give. Help us share in the blessings of giving as well as the happiness of receiving, that your love may be more widely shared. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from Titus chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to further the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of truth that leads to godliness in the hopes of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time and which now, at his appointed season, he has brought to light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of God our Savior. To Titus, my true son, in our common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. Appointing elders who love what is good. The reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. An elder must be blameless, faithful to his wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer manages God's household, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursing dishonest gains. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught, so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker for this morning. I first met Daniel many years ago when he was leading the Presbytery um, Day Camp. Um, If you will recall, several years ago when we still had Presbytery, uh, a day camp would go to several different churches with a a paid staff, and Daniel was uh, led this group of uh, young teens and just did a fantastic job. My a good friend of mine, her son was one of the one of the teachers, one of the helpers that year, and he raved about Daniel. Um, Then Daniel went on and uh, was the director of the shelter in uh, Niagara Falls. And fortunately, OAM uh, got him about six months ago, seven months ago-ish, five. I recall walking, uh, I stopped into uh, the pet store to pick up food for the critters and I'm on Ontario Street and I hear this, hey Martha, from a car and I stop and I look and there it's Daniel and he had just been given the job and so he pulled over and we rejoiced together. So it was so natural for him to come and speak. He is a homegrown boy, grew grew up in Font Hill, um, attended uh, E.L. Crosley, Niagara College and then University of Toronto and now he has come back, or he's stayed at home to serve our community. So, Daniel, we love you. I love you. I value you. And I'm anxious to hear what God has put on your heart this morning. First and foremost, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I am not prone to speaking behind a lectern, but because I have papers all askew, I'm going to speak behind a lectern, so apologize if I get up and move, so um, just remind me that I need to go back to the mic. Um, It's kind of who I am. Um, So I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I'm not the greatest orator. I tend to get off on tangents and tend to forget what points I'm trying to make. So let's just apologize and get that out of the way. And 
we're, we're in church on Sunday, so I better get some forgiveness. Um, and if not, too bad. Um, so uh, as Martha mentioned, I am uh, serving as the executive director at Open Arms Mission. Uh, I've just been there just over five months. And when she reached out and said, hey, Dan, uh, do you have anybody who can come and speak on a mission uh, Sunday, I was like, oh, pick me, pick me, um, because I'm really passionate about our community, but uh, instead of doing it just about what we do at Open Nurse Mission, I decided to do it, uh, create, uh, create, well, it, it was 30 pages, it's now like eight, um, because I don't want to be here until uh, sundown, um, but I wanted to pick something and then think out of the box because when we go to Mission and Service Sundays, it seems to be the same verses over and over and over that are used. You usually see Matthew 25, 35 to 40 talking about whatever you do for the least of these, you do for me. Or you see, um, Jesus, you hear about uh, the cornerstone of our faith, the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, uh, and love your neighbor as yourself. So as I was preparing for the Sunday, I was reading, um, well, not this Bible, but a Bible like this one. Um, and I picked up and I was reading Paul's letter to Titus. And I was reading his, the beginning of this, uh, his letter and thinking about how it had to do with service and ministry. And you see, the gospel of Jesus leads us into mission, no matter where we are. It leads us out of our own lives and into the lives of others. And you really see Paul capsulating this in Titus. If you look and you see Titus, he was one of Paul's superstars. He was like, he even, uh, Paul even said, my true son. Um, and meaning that he had a pretty impressive resume. He was pretty much the right-hand guy of Paul. And you read it, and this, uh, I'd like to highlight verse 5. Sorry, I'm, like I said, I'm going faster in my brain than what I have written down. I warned you, to be fair. <laughs> um, and we see that in hi highlighting verse 5, I, this is why I left you in Crete, that you may put, uh, put things that uh, left, are left undone and put them into order. If we look throughout our lives and in our community, there's a lot of things that are left undone, a lot of things that need to be put into order. And when we look at them, and actually look at them, they're actually ordinary things. So I want to highlight the value of the ordinary. When we go out to our community, or I don't even know, um, I'm going to say one of my highlights, once again, my brain is moving faster than what's written here. Um, one of the highlights was uh, of my time at VBS. Is Martha invited us into her home, and she cooked lunch for us. Something pretty ordinary. Martha's a very hospitable person. I'm sure many of you have either received something or had coffee or anything. Wonderful time, right? But we're going into making something so simple and ordinary as a lunch, there's so many different steps. One, you have to decide what you're eating, who you're going to invite. You have to wipe off that table. You have to need to make sure you bring in that lemon pledge, give it a little squeaky shine before your guests come. I don't do that, but I know others do. Um, but... When you do that, you have, then have to go to the grocery store, buy everything that you're needing to look. Th these are all ordinary tasks. Sometimes you go into the sink and you grab a washcloth to wipe down that table, have that thought in the back of your mind as, when's the last time this cloth was actually washed and how clean am I making my table? All ordinary actions. But to do grand things, we need to do, leading up to them, simple things ordinary things. When you're inviting people over for dinner, a simple ordinary thing is going to the grocery store. But the time that you spend together in that extraordinary is the benefit of taking these ordinary steps. When we're doing, uh, so when we are doing mission or doing outreach, Paul reminds us through Titus that when we're doing grand things, there are already promises put, put in place. And to make them happen, we have to take the time to do simple things, ordinary things, to make them happen. I'm actually going to put this paperwork away because I realize I've gotten off on a tangent, and I apologize. But with what we do as Christians, we're called through different ways to do simple, ordinary things, to value ordinary things, to do the extraordinary. 
In our community, there are people that are hungry. There are people that are hurting. There are people that are celebrating. There's people who are having the most joyous times in their lives. We need to take those things, those ordinary things, and take them into celebration. At Open Arms Mission, uh, we actually take the opportunity to, uh, to take the symbol of ordinary, this, this small task as what um, Paul charged Titus with. It was a small task. Go to every community that is on a tiny little island. It's as big as three times the size of Niagara, uh, the Niagara region, Crete. Um, it's really not that big. Titus thinking that he is Paul's right-hand man, we received almost a, a low-level job for what he thought he would be being tasked with. When we think about what we do in our day-to-day -day lives, a lot of the things that we get tasked with are low-level jobs. At Open Arms Mission, we, we, we are focused on meeting the corporeal acts for people or conducting corporeal acts of mercy for people. So that means meeting the physical needs so that the spiritual needs can be met. Uh, I am so sorry I got lost. <laughs> uh, so, um, today specifically I want to talk mission and fulfillment. Specifically I want to talk about uh, it at Open Arms Mission. It's an incredible organization that I'm happy to serve at. We provide food, uh, opportunities for connections for shelter through uh, different community uh, partners. Um, we provide practical assistance to those who are struggling. And the purpose is much greater. The purpose is to bring hope and love to those who are feeling burdened and alone and sometimes forgotten. As members of our community, it is our mission and purpose um, to work to better Welland, not just Welland, but Niagara region as a whole. When we focus right in our own locality, we are focusing on tr trying to create global changes. If we succeed in what we're trying to do, um, that hope spreads. Um, I'm going to digress once again and tell you a story. Uh, one of my first weeks during my time at Open Arms Mission, uh, it was right before Christmas, I had a lady come in and uh, she looked like somebody had just run her over with a snow plow, just had the weight of the world on her shoulders. She walked in and she said, this is not for me, but I have no other choice. And I happened to be on the floor at the time because I was trying to get used to the operations and uh, had the privilege of talking with this woman for a short period of time and take her through our grocery store. During this time, she told me about how um, the way, uh, th things in her life had just weighed over and over and over and she just had not received a break in so long. And as we were collecting the food off the shelves to put in the cart for her to take home, she started to cry. And I am not good with people who cry. I don't know if anybody else is, but as soon as somebody starts crying, I just want to clam up and say, okay, what do you need? Because whatever you got, got it, just stop crying. <laughs> whatever you do, just stop crying. This woman, I, and I asked this woman what I could do to help. And she said, you've already done it. I said, what did I do? I just, I'm so sorry, why did I make you cry? <laughs> like, stop crying, whatever I did, I'll take it back. And she ended up saying, you're the first person who's actually listened to me, not given me advice, not judged me, not stood in, in a place where you had something to condemn the other person that I'm talking about, but just listen. That's one of the wonderful things that I get to offer at work. One of the things that we as Christians are able to offer to each person we meet. Well, not even just Christians, but as people, as chosen people. We're able to listen to those who are hurting and give, not, I really didn't give anything to this person except really five, ten minutes of my time. At the end of this exchange, she's still bawling her eyes out, still in the state of I don't know what to do here. But I do the best I can. And when we were walking out the door, she said, I feel like I've met somebody who's made me feel stronger, more compassionate, and feels like I finally know what it means to feel loved in a time that I felt so uh, unloved. Supporting people through something as simple as giving a can of tuna 
carrots and tomato sauce. That's not even mine to give, but just because I work at a place where that is, I'm able to give, created a difference. After two weeks after uh, Christmas, we received a letter from this person. And um, she talked about how this exchange actually created hope for her for the first time in a long time. She reached out to somebody who could actually give her more practical assistance than just coming to a food bank. And I'm, I'm demeaning what we do uh, for this particular mo moment, but we gave her the moment that she just needed to feel loved. And our mission at Open Arms Mission is nobody should go hungry and everyone should feel God's love. And as somebody who professes themselves as a Christian, I think that that's something that we should always have in the forefront of all our minds. Nobody should go hungry and everybody should know God's love. In this small exchange, we were able to provide something that is real. She's now somebody who volunteers with us for quite frequently because she wants to give back and give that opportunity to others. Somebody to listen, somebody to understand that no matter what you're going through, we have the ability to stop and listen even for a second. So I'm going to highlight some of the things that we actually do at Open Arms Mission. Hopefully I don't digress longer than 35 seconds. But uh, so Open Arms Mission started 36 years ago. Uh, it was started by a small group of people who had a passion for making it a, a difference. They saw an incredible need, a need that was growing 36 years ago. And we're still meeting that need, and, um, and it is incredible. Um, 36 years ago, there was, they were handing food out of their trucks and just meeting people where they were at. And now we have a building, uh, actually several buildings, and uh, we've converted from a traditional food bank where you walk in and you receive a bag of food to a grocery store. Uh, this was implemented after COVID. Um, so when you walk in, you're, you're greeted by the lovely Deanna. She's, she's our food room manager. She is, if you ever have the chance to meet her, you will know who she is because as soon as you meet her, you are overwhelmed with the feeling of love that she projects into the world. And when you walk through, uh, you just give as much information as you're comfortable giving. We are the lowest barrier food bank in, in our area. Uh, we do not require uh, proof of address, proof of income, proof of anything. It's just if you come to our door, that means you're in need and we need to meet that. Um, we are a once a month service though uh, because of the incredible need. Uh, at this time, uh, when I first started back in December, our month uh, of people that we served was 742 people. Uh, for the month of uh, March, we were 1,736 people served. Uh, and we are one of three um, uh, food insecurity focused organizations in Welland. Uh, there's multitude of different organizations that do assist with food insecurity, but specifically that it's our primary focus. So the need is growing. Um, Open Arms Mission uh, in 2008, I believe, purchased our farm. Uh, it's out on Forks Road. Uh, it is a 13 and a half acre farm with a, I believe it's either 12 or 14,000 square feet um, uh, warehouse where we do our sorting, our food production, uh, and we are also have a community garden initiative that's uh, actively underway. Uh, it's called Plant a Row. It's really exciting. Uh, if you want to know any information, reach out to Stacy at the office. She's the one for it um, because she uh, she's working uh, with Lydia uh, to create this program. So our whole focus uh, this year is growth. Uh, we're really trying to make sure that we have um, healthy and happy food so that we can fill the need for locally grown nutritious food for our locally grown and hopefully nutritious families uh, as soon as we can. Uh, we have a multitude of different, uh, different ministries within our ministry uh, with the focus of uh, Wednesday night men's group, food insecurity. Uh, we've had a bunch of different things happen and shuffle since COVID, but as we are starting to reopen the doors, um, a lot of things are underway to re be re recreated. Um, and as they roll out, our social media is honestly the best way to keep an eye on that. Um, Facebook, um, 
Instagram and our website are the best access. Our website, um, unfortunately, I had some slideshows, uh, slides, but uh, the, I don't have access to share them, so I don't have all of the sli slides this morning. Um, but our website is openarmsmissionwellen.com, and that has a lot of our information. And uh, Joyce, uh, email who's up on the screen uh, is our volunteer coordinator. So if you want to get involved or ask about anything specific, Joyce is your, your go-to person. Uh, she is absolutely wonderful um, and a source of everything um, because our organization, I think I failed to say, is volunteer run mostly. Uh, we have a team of nine, but everything else is volunteer uh, led, which is really exciting. Um, so. Once again, I told you I was a terrible order, so I, I, I apologize for my tangent. I did warn you, and um, I did write this beautiful message, but it really doesn't matter. The things that we need to know as people who are under, uh, being asked to, to make a difference is, is that we are called, which was profound, um, is that Jesus himself told us that we need to love, our, uh, love God with every action and inaction, every word spoken and unspoken. So glorifying God in all things, but also to love one another through every action and inaction as well. And I think that that's a beautiful message. And um, thank you for your time. And um, before I go, I'd like to pray with you guys. I feel like I lost my, my brain, but uh, I always find that prayer helps with it. So join me in prayer. Father, allow, allow us to uh, serve others with a joyful heart, never keeping score, always giving, never expecting to receive. Allow us to give of ourselves, to give of our talents, to give of our goods, to give of our time and of our energy, to give of our hearts and of our souls. Help us understand the needs of others, never criticizing, never demeaning, never scolding, never condemning. You've always been so gracious to us. You've always been loving, always forgiving, always restoring, never gloating over our defeats. Even when we have been so wrong, Father, keep a condemning spirit far from our hearts and even further from our lips. Keep us in, uh, in service to others as we serve you with gentleness, compassion, and tenderness. Never just diminishing the worth of another. Choosing to extend mercy to the brokenhearted, the heavy laden, and the those filled with despair. Just like you've repeatedly shown to us time and time again. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you. <laughs> Let's look to the screen or follow the or look in your hymnal and sing together as we follow the choir when I needed a neighbor.
just a reminder that following the service, everyone is welcome for a time of fellowship, and I'm sure Daniel will be around to answer any questions you might have about OAM. Just a reminder, um, when you're at the grocery store, grab an extra bag of groceries. I know this month, which ends today, um, OAM has requested uh, canned meat, tuna, ham, all that sort of thing. Um, we'll have something new next, ne er, hygiene products are for May. But if you're not a big shopper, write a check, put some money in an envelope and put it, make, if you're writing a check, make it out to Central United and then we will gather the funds we've accumulated today and next week and then send one big check to OAM. Um, they're a great organization. I know this congregation has been supporting them for many years, and uh, we continue to do so because, as you've heard, the need is in only increasing. And now receive this blessing. Go and act for the care of our community. Go and learn for the sake of our community. Go and pray for the love of people. And may the care of God enfold you, the passion of the risen Christ embolden you, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit empower you, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>